The mainstream media continues to claim that the 2024 presidential race is already decided, asserting that Trump has lost to Kamala Harris, often referred to in such terms due to her connection to Willie Brown. But if this is true, why is left-wing billionaire George Soros making moves to acquire over 220 radio stations, including the Odyssey Network, which reaches 165 million Americans before the election? More concerning is, why the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, is allowing this acquisition. Last week, FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr raised the alarm during a House Oversight Committee hearing, calling the move a violation of the FCC's fundamental rules against monopolies. The New York Post first reported on the Soros deal, which would give him control of 40 media markets once finalized. Soros, a prominent left-wing megadonor, has a long history of funding Democratic candidates and supporting far-left social causes. His wealth comes from currency speculation, having played roles in significant financial crises, such as the collapse of the British pound in 1992 and economic instability in Thailand, Malaysia, Russia and Indonesia in the late 1990s. Domestically, Soros has funded movements like Defund the Police, and supported initiatives around transgender health care for minors. He's also been linked to backing efforts that facilitate mass migration into the US. Commissioner Carr has been vocal against recent actions by the FCC, such as the Biden administration's recent decision to pull grants from Elon Musk's Starlink service, reallocating them to telecom companies with left-leaning affiliations. Carr emphasized that the FCC's decision-making process regarding the Soros deal deviates from its usual procedures, suggesting a deliberate shortcut. The FCC, created in 1934 under President Franklin D. Roosevelt to regulate radio and its opposition voices, has five commissioners. The vote on Soros's deal passed three, two, with the three Democrat-appointed commissioners in favor and the two Republicans opposing. With over 15,000 radio stations in the US and 91% of Americans still tuning in, radio remains the country's most widely used media platform. As the 2024 presidential election approaches, this unprecedented media consolidation raises serious questions about influence and control leading up to the November 5th showdown between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris.